So, you know, I've been talking a lot lately about wanting to shoot more black and white film, and it is something I'm gonna do once I'm able to start kind of making some of the work that I have planned. But my experience is really limited, and I've actually only ever shot one roll of HP5. That's it when it comes to black and white. So I figured, you know, now it's really kind of a better time than ever just to get out and practice and experiment with things. So I figured what could be cool is to do a series of these videos, starting with this one today going out and for this video, testing three different film stocks, take a look at the initial results and then jump back on the computer afterwards and just kind of compare the three of them, see the different characteristics and, you know, start to get a feel for which one might, you know, work for the images that I'm gonna be making in the future. So also wanna note, if you are a black and white shooter, I'd love to hear below what your favorite film stock is or if you have any that you think are worth trying out that I haven't mentioned yet. But anyways, let's jump into it. The first film to test out is Kodak's T-Max 400, which is known for its higher contrast and also its sharpness. And as someone who's only ever shot HP5, I was very curious to see how much different of a look this film would give me. I was immediately pretty impressed with how the T-Max images looked. And you know, I was expecting them to be a bit punchy and they were, but it wasn't over the top and they still had kind of just the right amount of character while still giving you the opportunity to add more of it or pull some of it back. But I don't want to stay too long. She All of these images we're looking at only had slight edits done to them. And later on in the video, we're gonna take a look at the untouched versions, but I was able to get a look I was happy with from the T-Max with just minimal adjustments to the brightness and also the black and the white points. Not bad results at all from a film that for some reason I thought I wasn't really going to enjoy. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be Next up was Ilford's HP5, which is a classic and also one of the most popular and flexible black and white film stocks. This was the film that I really thought I'd be attracted to from the start, so I was curious to see how it would compare to the others. It definitely has a softer look than the T-Max with a lot of mid-tones and a lot of gray. And you know, even though I held back on editing too heavy for this comparison, I found really quickly that I was always having to add quite a bit of contrast and make some more kind of extreme tonal adjustments to get a look that I liked. In a way, there's an appeal with HP5 where I know that I'd be working with a really flexible film that would give me options when it comes to things like exposure, development, and processing. But I also kind of feel like it's one I need to sit on for a bit as the initial results didn't really jump out at me. The third roll that I decided to shoot for this first part was Rolly Retro 400S. And you know, this was a random purchase as I was searching for different black and white films, but the results that I saw online intrigued me, showing just a very contrasty and unique look. When doing research about the 400S, I read that it's sourced from Agfa and is actually an aerial film that's meant for cutting through heavy cloud cover. And I found out very quickly that it has a look to it. By far the punchiest of the three films that I tried and probably just a little bit too much for my likings. The images had an almost gritty feel to them. And even though it was kind of unique and somewhat interesting, I personally wouldn't want to work with a film like it for a big project, just knowing that I'm baking in a look that strong. So really interesting results. And I got to say, I kind of have mixed feelings on all three of them. But let's jump on the computer. We'll kind of dive a little deeper and I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. And we'll also do some comparisons so we can really see the standout differences. Okay, so jumping into things really quick, important to note, uh, these were all scanned at a lab. I had these developed and scanned by Carmen C. to Film Lab in Spain. Uh, they did an amazing job, super happy with the results. So if you're looking for a lab, highly recommend them. I'll put a link below if you're interested. Uh, but for the scans, I just asked if they could kind of give me like a really neutral base look with all of them, just leaving some room for some edits uh, 
with nothing really too heavy handed just so we could really get a feel for the differences between these film stocks. But what we will do is we're gonna start with the HP5. And as I kind of ventured into this world of black and white, I just assumed that this was going to be the film that I probably would work with uh, right from the start. Uh, I'd say most likely because it's the most popular and it's a great film as well. It has kind of this classic look, you can see right away. Uh, but it definitely is a little more flat. There's a lot of gray in it, a lot of mid-tones. Uh, but it is very flexible. So I found, none of these were edited. Some of these uh, images that I showed throughout the edit, I did uh, do some tweaks to. But for this section, I've zeroed them all out just so we can really look. But whenever I've worked with these HP5 images, I found that I'm always you know, having to add in quite a bit more contrast because they are are pretty flat. Um, we aren't gonna spend too much time doing this stuff, but I will say as well, you know, since I'm new to this world, I still feel like I'm trying to develop and figure out, you know, what I really prefer when it comes to a look. But so far I found that that is like, you know, a little darker. I'm not a huge fan of like whites that are super punchy and say like brilliant. So I find I'm always pulling stuff down a little bit, but I still do like some contrast in the images. So HP5, it just, it seems like a great choice because it's so flexible and it is very, you know, it gives you a good base where you can do a lot to it. But uh, I don't know if it's like, it kind of feels like it's potentially the safe choice, which again, I don't know if that's a bad thing. It seems like a really flexible stock. So it is cool, but with a lot of these, so we'll jump, this image is a good example. When I shot this, there were some really nice kind of tones here with this ambient light coming down this kind of alleyway. And you can see in this final image, um, it's very flat. So if I was to edit this, I'd probably pull the exposure way down and then you know really bump the contrast up and probably pull those highlights down a little bit just to kind of mute them a bit. But you can see the contrast is up at like 75. So uh, having to add a lot into this, but it's, it's still working. It looks really good. Um, oh, this one already has some, con let's zero that back out. So you can see that was with some uh, a lot of contrast added, but uh, this one as is, a lot of gray in this image. And you'd have to add quite a bit of contrast to, to get some of that separation. That's at 100 and uh, it doesn't even look super heavy handed. So interesting, I do really like HP5. I liked it when I first shot it, but feel like I'm kind of after something that maybe just has a little bit more punch to it, but not too much, kind of a fine balance. So jumping into T-Max, you'll notice right away, there's a big difference in terms of contrast and punch. And at first, I didn't think I was gonna like this. I thought T-Max was gonna be like a little too sharp and contrast, you know, almost like digital. Um, these first few images, I'm not really a huge fan of, but I'll show you a few after where this film potentially really kind of sold me. So quite a bit punchier than the HP5. You know, this is looking like the HP5 images that we would add like 75% contrast to, but it's really cool in the fact that, you know, it's a clean, it's a really clean film for a 400 speed. I'm not really, uh, you know, grain doesn't bother me that much if it's not obviously aggressive, but this is a very clean film stock for 400 and very sharp. Then nice, you know, nice kind of contrast here as well. But this next image, so this one is where it potentially really sold me. Actually the next few, I'm just gonna zoom this out a wee bit. So it does a bit of a border. Um, so I would still edit this one. I would bring it down, the exposure down. I'd probably mute these highlights a little bit. But I really like how this looks. I feel like it has some, just a unique character to it. I like how this car kind of pops. There's still some nice separation here in the foreground with the grass and the gravel. And it just has, it has a cool look to it. Really cool look. Uh, same with this next one. It's punchy, but uh, I would edit this one down a little bit as well. Maybe not quite that much. It's got a nice look, especially in this kind of light in the weather that I've, I've been experiencing here often in the UK. Um, seems like it could be a good choice. But this next image is one that I really liked. This is the Pentax 105 2.4. This is wide open. This is too bright. I would pull this exposure down quite a bit. Maybe open some of that up a little bit. Maybe not that much, something like that. I'm just gonna zoom this out a wee bit. But I really like how this looks. So as this file came from 
the scanner, it's a little too punchy, a little too bright for me, but uh, you know, it responds well to edits and I like this look quite a bit. It's a little darker, you know, the highlights are muted a bit now, but there's still, you know, the film deals with um, these tones here and this contrast really nice. So I, I, I'm a big fan of how this looks. Uh, this is the 75 2.8, this is wide open as well. I'd probably do something similar uh, like that. Again, this is just quick, but yeah, this this film has a nice look to it. And then the rest kind of just more the same. Get the point now. So I gotta say, T-Max impressed me and I feel like, obviously I got a lot more films to, to test, but I feel like this, this could potentially be um, the one. We'll see, this is a little bright as well. Uh, but what's interesting, we're gonna look at the Roly 400 next. So just like how, you know, going from the T-Max or going from the HP5 to the T-Max, there's this kind of pretty drastic change. The Roly was more of that. So, you know, I found that this film, this is the 400S, the Roly 400S. It is even more punchy than the T-Max and it has this almost like gritty look to it, which is actually pretty cool. It's got a neat look, but I feel like, I personally don't know if I'd wanna lock into a film like this for an entire project. I feel like at times it just might be a little too much. And, you know, these aren't edited, but you'll see this film, um, it, it doesn't respond bad to edits, but I feel like it doesn't look as natural when you start tweaking some of the, the tones in it. Uh, but what is interesting is let's pull up, I have a similar shot from the HP5. So that's HP5 and this is uh, the, the Roly. So quite a big difference when you see them side by side. Like I said, the HP5 has a lot of gray in it. So the Roly is cool for sure. But I, like I said, I think it's just a little too heavy handed for me. Um, let's actually look. I have a shot on the T-Max of the interior. It's a different, uh, it's horizontal instead of vertical, but be interesting to see the difference. So you can see side by side with these two, how much punchier the Roly is compared to the T-Max. So cool film. It may be fun to shoot just like here and there just to make some kind of random images. But personally, I think if I locked in to a film, let's get back there. I feel like if I locked into a film uh, like this, I'd maybe get a little tired of it after a while. And again, you can see if you try and start messing with the tones too much, again, this is heavy handed, but it just doesn't look that natural. So it's almost like this look that comes with it is baked in. And I'd almost refer to it as like, it looks like someone jacked up the clarity slider a little bit in Lightroom. Uh, we'll do one more comparison because we have a shot of the T-Max here. Uh, and they aren't too far off in that actually, but the Roly definitely still has more character. Too much character. Two more images. The one thing I will say though is, um, you know, if we zoom in, because the, the Roly film is also a 400 speed and it's still fairly clean as well. It's not super grainy. You can see some grain here. These are all handheld on the Pentax. So they still look pretty sharp. And then one last one. I feel like this one I might've underexposed a little bit. You can see as you, if you want to kind of pull anything out of the shadows there, it's not working too great. But uh, yeah, definitely has an interesting look, but I think this is one I will definitely cross off my list because it's just, it's just a little bit too kind of heavy handed for me and too much of a look. But out of the two so far, I'm not, I'm definitely not writing off HP5, but I think T-Max has potentially won me over very quick. It, you know, these images especially jumped out at me right when I saw them. And uh, it could be a cool film to work with moving forward. So we'll see what I think after I test some more of these, but this I would say so far is in the lead. So really interesting results. I love doing stuff like this, especially when I have the time just going out to practice and test. I think it's super important just to, you know, understand the tools that you're using and what works best for you. So looking forward to the second video. In that one, I'm gonna be testing some more Roly films. So I have some RPX 100, also have some Super Pan 200, and then have some Ilford Pan F Plus. So some slower film stocks, but looking forward to seeing how these kind of compare to the ones that we looked at today. But anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching, for commenting, for all the support, all that kind of stuff. And I'll talk to you soon.